Hey everybody and welcome back to some more Oxygen Not Included. We're back once again with the Impenetrable Gang and we are just 0.2 cycles away from this cool steam vent finally erupting, pumping out that cool steam that we are then going to heat up with our thermal aqua tuna and then turn into water and power using our steam turbine to hopefully give us an unlimited supply of water for our electrolyzer to keep our base full of oxygen for the foreseeable future. And so between episodes to make this a reality, I have gone ahead and tweaked this setup just a little bit, uh, responding to a couple of comments that I saw as well as just some uh, design flaws that I noticed between episodes. Uh, the first big design flaw that somebody did point out in the comment section was that previous the waterlock that stopped all of the gases from the outside world getting into our steam room was like right here and there was nothing between the steam geyser and the waterlock and so as soon as the steam geyser erupted what was going to happen is the geyser was going to pump out very very hot steam that we were then going to increase the temperature of with our thermo aqua tuna uh, to the point where that would almost certainly turn the waterlock into steam thus breaking the waterlock and all of the gas on the outside was going to just rush in filling this room with polluted oxygen chlorine and all the stuff that we do not want in this room whatsoever uh, so i replaced the waterlock i've moved it over here to the far left i've also set up another waterlock up between uh, this area which eventually is hopefully going to be a vacuum right now it's got a tiny little bit of polluted oxygen uh, that's kind of true for the whole area right now uh, the plan is to eventually have this whole area be a, a vacuum so that everything in here is just steam and then out here it's just a complete vacuum and uh, nothing more and that's why we've got this uh, gas pump here the gas pump is currently pumping all of the gas out of this room and down into uh, one of these three reservoirs or sorry four reservoirs i had to keep adding more and more reservoirs between episodes because there was so much gas that i had to uh, had to get rid of but uh, essentially up here the reason for the second waterlock is that what i want to do up here is try to cool down the steam turbines because the steam turbines work in a little bit of a weird way if we look at their information on the side panel here you'll see that their overheat temperature is 1050 degrees which is insanely hot right but for whatever reason, if the temperature of the steam turbine gets above 100 degrees Celsius, it just stops working. It will stop turning steam into water and it'll stop producing power. The whole thing just shuts down. And especially given that we're going to be pumping steam at 125 degrees into it, it's almost certain that the steam turbine here will require some form of active cooling to, to bring it down below that 100 degree mark. We are doing a little bit of that with the cold water here. The cold water that's produced by the Thermo Aqua Tuna is pumped back around and we do have radiant pipes to uh, soak up a bit of that heat but going forward and what i think is going to make sure that the steam turbines stay nice and cool is filling this room here up with hydrogen and then moving all of the wheeze watts that we once had over in our bristle blossom area over and planting them either side of our steam turbines we got a little bit of space over on the left and the right right now we have six wheeze watts and i think for now i will go ahead and plant uh, all six three on each side and see how that works if it's too cold we can take them away if it's too hot we could see about finding more around the map and trying to cool this down yet further the hydrogen is not required, but the hydrogen, um, I believe, is the best thermally conductive gas that we have right now. And so having that is going to make it a lot easier for not only the steam turbines to output their heat, but also uh, for the wheeze watts to kind of soak in that heat and then redistribute the cold hydrogen that they uh, that they create. And so that's the idea up here. That's why we have this water lock. We don't want any of the hydrogen coming out. We don't want anything that's not hydrogen coming in, uh, nothing like that. And so we have that there. I've done a little bit of power wire reworking, and power is one of the main things that we are going to have to work on at the start of today's episode because as i mentioned previously this system is not power positive it doesn't produce power um, in and of itself despite the fact that we have two steam turbines uh, producing power in this setup uh, because they're not going to be working at max efficiency i don't think they're going to be able to produce the 1200 watts required for the thermo aqua tuna here and so one thing we are going to have to do is bring outside power over to this area which in and of itself is kind of its own problem because as we saw before with trying to get uh, the conductive wire over over to this area getting more than a thousand watts to an area is quite expensive so much so that we move the hydrogen generator over here for the metal refinery and so we really have two options here the first option is conductive wire again like we've used along the bottom of the base here the problem with conductive wire is that it requires refined metal and as you'll know, if you've watched the previous episodes, our metal refinery is currently not online because it pumps out just so much heat. And so if we were to make enough conductive wire to go all the way from the bottom left of the base up to the top right, that would require a ridiculous amount of time, especially if we're using the rock crusher. And not only that, because the rock crusher is inefficient, it would take a bunch of extra resources as well, a bunch of extra of whatever metal or we chose in order to get all that conductive wire. And so I think even though 
It's a little uglier, and even though you can't hide it in tile, I think we're going to go with heavy watt wire. And my plan here is to run the heavy watt wire from the top of our transformer tower over here on the left, have that go up, and then essentially just go all the way along the top of the base until we hit up with the pre-existing heavy watt wire right here. I'm then going to go ahead and delete the heavy watt wire that goes all the way down and across to here. I think I will hold off on deleting that though, because I do want to make sure that. The machines up here do have a little bit of power and as of right now we do have a nice backlog in the hydrogen generator and the battery so uh, hopefully that will act as a buffer while they get this new power system up and running other things that i've changed up here i have reworked the plumbing a little bit for the most part the idea is exactly the same the water is going to go into the thermal aqua tuna it's going to get cooled down it's going to go around hopefully get heated up a little bit here if it's below 17 degrees celsius it should go out through the liquid shutoff valve and connect up to the main source of water uh, if not it should go down and continue looping around um, as that happens obviously over time water is going to uh, leave this loop because as it gets cooled down over and over and over again eventually we're going to lose water as it falls below 17 degrees and, uh, and flushes out of the system and so there is a kind of backup system in place to where some of the 95 degree water coming out of the steam turbines uh, can go down across and into here as well uh, if it needs it so it should come down and then start to back up here once this backs up uh, the hot water should then go down and connect up to this pipe which eventually we're going to go ahead and connect right back up to our electrolyzer and I do want to be specific about this right now the pipe here connects up to just the general main water supply and i really think that we want to specify that this is only going to go to the electrolyzer otherwise we're going to end up with 95 degree water over in the core of our base being used for plumbing and food and all of that kind of stuff which is not a problem for like the showers and for the food itself but the temperature of the base is already quite high and so if we start pumping near boiling water around the base i think we're going to see uh, a rapid rise in temperature that we're really uh, not prepared to handle just yet and so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to schedule the deletion of these pipes these are no longer needed they were just there for the water lock and then what we'll do is we'll have a normal liquid pipe connect up here that's going to run all the way down across add to here and then much like with the natural gas geyser the steam geyser obviously has a dormant period and so we are going to have to buffer the water so that the electrolyzer can continue to run once the steam geyser uh, stops becoming active once it goes dormant for however long it goes dormant for we want to make sure we've got enough water uh, in storage to get us through that time right so for now i'm going to put down a couple of liquid reservoirs something like this should do just fine and much like with the system we have for the gas reservoirs we're going to go and i think do something like this to where the water has to flow through every single reservoir uh, to finally get out and to the electrolyzer so we'll do that we'll go ahead and schedule like a priority 8 delete of these pipes here as well as a priority 8 delete of like this pipe here for now so that the only water that can come into the system is uh, is from these reservoirs here so i think that is almost everything i did double up the walling of inside the tile around the steam vent this guy has already started pumping out that 500 degree steam into this area here i was told in the comment section that one layer of insulated tile wouldn't quite be enough and that some heat would still leak out and so i have doubled the wall up a little bit i guess i could put another tile there but then i'd have to move the uh, the water lock down and so i haven't done that just yet and uh, you can see in here it is quite hot but thankfully now it is over pressurized and so uh, the steam vent shouldn't be able to pump out any more steam until we uh, we open up this room and uh, try and get it back to normal real quick the last couple of things that we need to do here uh, one i'm fairly certain we're going to need some temp shift plates in this area here because even once the room is full of steam the thermal aqua tuna is still going to get very hot very fast and is still in danger of overheating and damaging itself even though we've made it out of gold amalgam and so in the interest of trying to pull some of that heat away from the thermal aqua tuna and also in the interest of trying to heat the room as a whole up kind of more uniformly i think it's going to make sense to have a couple of temp shift plates that for now i think we'll make out of gold just because it's a little bit more thermally conductive than something like igneous rock and i think we'll just have this run across like so I'm still a little concerned that the Thermo Aqua Tuna might still overheat, and so we might also need uh, some kind of coolant along the bottom of the, uh, the floor here. Now, usually for coolant, we've been using water up until now, like in here with our polymer presses. We have a little layer of water along the bottom of the room to try and cool the polymer presses down or try and dissipate some of that heat a little bit because water has quite a high uh, thermal capacity. It can hold quite a bit of heat, and it can also disperse that heat quite well. Now, of course, we can't use water in the room here because if we do it's just going to turn to steam and then go into the steam turbines um, but there is a chance that we can use polluted water because i know polluted water does have a higher boiling point than regular water but its evaporation point here is still 120 degrees celsius and so given that we need to get our steam at least to 125 degrees celsius i don't think that's going to work either the only other potential liquid that we have is oil 
which definitely could work. It has a thermal conductivity of two, uh, which compared to water is uh, is much higher. It can transfer the heat quite well, almost four times as well. And it does have a boiling point of 400 degrees Celsius. And so what I think I will do just to be on the safe side, and the reason I paused, by the way, is because this thing is going to erupt in 0.2 cycles. I want to get quite a lot of stuff done before we hit play here, before this thing uh, starts pumping steam out all over the place. Uh, so what I think I'm going to try here is throwing down a bottle emptier like this and then grabbing a pitcher pump and seeing if we can just kind of bottle up the oil. I actually have no idea if this works. I know we've managed to bottle up uh, but water and whatnot before, but I don't know if the pitcher pump can pump out like hot oil. It does say manually pumps liquids into bottles for transport. It doesn't specify like not oil. So there isn't really any oil left here. And so I think we are going to have to go over and try like this area of oil. So that is going to require digging through some abyssalite, which might take a little while actually. But let's try something like this. We'll have a tile uh, that runs kind of like over so our duplicates can actually get to here. And then I think we will dig a little bit further up because if possible, I would like to not have the polluted water kind of spill out into this area. So I think what we'll do is we'll just dig down like this and then across until we hit this area where the, the pump's going to be. And I will set that to like a priority nine. That is one of the things that I really think needs to be done um, ASAP because of course, if the Thermo Aqua Tuna does over here and keeps breaking over and over and over again, then the system's just not going to work. Um, another thing I need to do is I need to set all of these doors to auto. Uh, right now they're set to um, open because I wanted all the gas, of course, to be pumped away by this gas pump and to create a nice vacuum here. Um, of course, it's still working on becoming a vacuum, but we do need to lock these two doors to make sure the steam uh, doesn't come out and doesn't get pumped away into uh, this gas reservoir here. But other than that, I think everything is pretty much ready to go. Uh, I am a little concerned that the system might need more water to get going. As I mentioned before, the water does kind of flow out of the system as it gets cold. And I think right now it's going to take a little bit of water to get up to 125 degrees Celsius and to get these steam turbines online. And so if we can't get that kind of initial kickstart, that initial like bump of hot water in here to get the system and get the steam hot enough to produce its own water and then to kind of become self-sufficient, then I don't think the system's going to work. And so what I'm also thinking of doing is potentially uh, temporarily moving the metal refinery up into this area here. It works on quite a few levels. It already has uh, a nice high power source available to it. We've already got the heavy watt wire here, so we can just plug it right in and it gives us a nice source of very hot water that we can pump into this loop to kind of kickstart the system and get the water hot enough to where the steam turbines can start to produce their own water. And so I'm going to throw one of these down up here as well. I'm not wholly convinced that all of this stuff that I'm scheduling here is going to get done before uh, the episode starts, but I can try. Now, there is the issue of the fact that we do have to get water into this... Um, this metal refinery. Now, the output, I believe, is here. So we could just do like this and connect that up to the input slot of the loop. But we do have to pump water in, in somewhere, which could be a little difficult. I guess it doesn't matter for now if we just do something like this, because that way the cold water that comes out of the system is just going to get recirculated back around. Yeah, I think I quite like that. I might have to get rid of this pipe temporarily because that might stop the uh, the water from actually flowing out of the uh, the shutoff valve but i'll hit play 0.2 cycles is uh is very very close we're 98 seconds away oh my goodness uh from this um this activating and it's not even 98 real seconds we're on three times speed so this is uh, is definitely not going to be ready by the time this starts to erupt but i think that's okay i'm gonna set the locking of the door to a high priority because i don't want this area here filled with with water which I think is what's going to happen. Like the steam's going to escape, it's going to cool down, and we're just going to end up with water all over the floor. So I'll set it to a slightly higher priority. They've got like 20 seconds left. Okay, so the door's been closed. The system definitely isn't going to work just yet, but that's fine. We'll let this room fill up with steam. Um, I think, again, it is going to cool down pretty much right away here due to the fact that um, the temperature in here is not that hot, 46 degrees. I think we're going to see water just kind of all the way along the, uh, along the floor here. This is already overheating, but the system is pretty much ready to go. And oh, of course, I completely forgot that even when active, it's only active for 199 seconds every 480 seconds. And so we might have a little bit of extra time to uh, to get some of this work done. I am going to set the uh, the fixing of this machine to like a priority six for now, because although it is something that it's doing, it's not something that I want them prioritizing over, uh, over other issues in the base. Um, over here, since last episode, these have held up pretty well. Uh, all of the bristle blossoms are growing. None of them are, are too hot, even in this room with just the one wheeze watt. It's doing just fine. And so I'm fairly certain that we should be able to get away with potentially just digging all of these up and having these rooms uh, stay cool enough on their own, which would be fantastic. This room over here 
is getting a little hotter. We're closing in on 50 degrees Celsius at the uh, far right of the room here. But for the most part, it's still nowhere near that 80 degree limit that uh, stops the pinch of peppers from going. And so for now, I am completely fine with the way that is shaping up. The steam has finally started erupting here. You'll see it's instantly uh, become overpressurized because the steam's got nowhere to go. And right now it is, it is above 125 degrees Celsius there. So I'm surprised that it says not enough steam. That's interesting. Oh, the polluted. Oh, okay. See, that's going to be a problem. We need to get this polluted oxygen out of this room. I was really hoping that wouldn't be a problem. But I think I am going to have to put a pump in here. And then... Oh, it's going to be so janky. But okay, we're going to have to, I think, get rid of some of this stuff for now because we need the space. And we want to try and keep the pressure in here as high as possible because I think... Okay. What we're going to have to do is the steam vent, thankfully, will stop emitting steam if the pressure is at 5,000. However, if we use a high pressure gas vent, we can pump up to 20 kilograms. And so what I'm thinking here, we do need some refined metal uh, for that uh, gas pump. So I will go ahead and schedule the creation of a fair bit of iron here in our rock crusher. But what I'm thinking here is if we go ahead and grab ourselves a gas filter, that for now I'll go ahead and put down right about here. Essentially what I'm thinking is we're going to pump anything that's not steam so steam can go back into the room anything that's not steam is going to go straight out and over to basically right next to the pre-existing gas pump to get sent down and into one of these reservoirs if it is steam it needs to be sent out and into a high pressure gas vent to make sure that all of the steam stays in this room here so we'll see about getting them to build that we'll lower the priority of this door here the other door seem to be not quite so high a priority which is good Flippin' heck, they got so much stuff to do right now. They got so much work that it's doing. Also, we do need to dig uh, this out here so they actually get over and build this wire. This is something we are going to have to keep an eye on going forward because uh, what we're doing here is we're creating um, a pathway to this area that doesn't involve going through the checkpoint, this one down here. And so if our duplicates do dig this area out and then decide they need to go over to you know, fix something over here, what they could end up doing is just coming up, going across, and then walking into a room that is full of scalding hot steam, which I'm no scientist, but I feel like it's not going to be a good thing uh, for our duplicates whatsoever. Uh, we are going to get a lot of water here because as the door opens, as I mentioned before, the steam is going to come out and it's going to condense into, uh, into water. Not much that we can do about that just yet. I feel like right now all we can do really is just to kind of wait for the setup to be done and then clean up whatever water is, uh, is there. I am going to bump up the priority of this pipe breaking too urgent because right now water is very rapidly leaving the system uh okay no actually i will not break this pipe what i will do instead is i will break one of these lower pipes for now at a high priority and then temporarily because we do need more water in the system i'm gonna go ahead and build another pipe like this just so that we can get water into the initial loop to get the system up and running so i'll hit control z here and we'll start speeding things up um, a fair bit i think it is going to take them a little while to, uh, to start to get some of that stuff taken care of uh, while they do that i will talk a little bit about the priorities around the base which i have changed a little bit between episodes you'll now notice that there's a lot more blue around on the priority screen here as opposed to uh, the sea of purple that we had previously and so essentially what i've done now is i have bumped the things that are necessities, so food and cooking food, up to priority eight. That is the highest priority in the base right now. So no matter what, the food should be the top priority of any duplicate who's in charge of making food. And then um, the ninth priority is kind of reserved now for things that we want them to do above making food. So if there's something that really needs to be done uh, that we don't quite want to set as a top priority, you know, we don't want to tell them to not sleep for it, but we do want to make sure it gets done before everything else. We can set that to priority nine, gives us a bit more flexibility there. And then Everything else I've kind of set as a priority one, two, or three. Uh, the research station here is not quite a priority three. I think I'll set that at priority seven. And the rock crush I'll also set at priority seven. Uh, the door here, I'm, I've been setting doors at priority one. I actually don't know what setting a door priority does. If you do, feel free to let me know in, uh, in the comment section. But essentially, um, I have set everything that is kind of a daily task to seven. So critter ranching, the power station and the power plant, everything in there, uh, this stuff here. So things that I want people doing on a daily basis is set to seven. And then anything that's not that is either set to one, two or three. So all of the storage is set to two. So if they've got nothing else they can do, they can start putting things in storage. Um, three is stuff like these uh, mealwood plants over here. They can get done if they've already done kind of their normal daily work with the coal power or with the critter ranching or with the researching uh, or with the food cooking, stuff like that. Um, I don't know again what's setting the mess tables to three does but those are also uh, set to three and in general the idea here is just to hopefully give us a bit more flexibility with our priorities because previously everything had to be like an eight or a nine because we wanted it done now whereas now we've got a bit more flexibility and that we can set something to four five six seven eight or nine and still have it you know mean something 
Whereas uh, previously, everything was kind of just set to five by default, which really kind of limited what you could do in uh, in that sense. So the water is flowing around here, which is good as well. It's also flowing in two directions. I'm going to set this brick in here to uh, priority like right now, because again, I don't want the water coming out, uh, especially if it's scalding hot water, which there is a chance we do get at, uh, at some point here. So all the water should be going in the other direction. Uh, we also need to get rid of, I guess, these three pipes. We probably don't need to get rid of all three of them. Essentially, I'm thinking we need to put a bridge here so that we can specify which way we want the water to flow right now, because at the moment it can flow in either direction. Again, I am going to set that to priority urgent because this, this water is key to this whole system working. If the water breaks, then everything else is going to break. So uh, I would like this also to be a top priority. And then I would love for this to be a top priority as well. Going forward, everything can be like a priority seven after that. So get that built, get the water up into the system here and, uh, and everything should be good. Let's go ahead and hook up power to our metal refinery. We'll do that like so. I did end up using conductive wire going from here into here. That's because if we didn't use conductive wire here, then we would have needed a heavy watt joint plate, which could have worked, but also uh, kind of limits where we can put things. For example, I don't think you can have heavy watt wire going through the liquid shutoff here, so we couldn't have it there. Um, I needed the door to be up a little bit so we can have our layer of water. And so in the end, I just decided to go with a little bit of conductive wire that goes from our main heavy watt wire over into here. Uh, nothing over here uses more than 2000 watts anyway, so the conductive wire should be able to get the job done just fine. Uh, these machines are all way too hot. And that is because I have foolishly not made them out of gold amalgam. So I will break those real quick. and We'll put them back down in, uh, in just a second here. Not the ideal start that I thought we were going to have in today's episode. It, uh, it didn't quite go to plan, but uh, hopefully once I delete this here, we can then rebuild both of those, this time out of gold amalgam. The gold might still be too hot, simply due to the fact that the overheat temperature is 125 degrees. And while the steam in here does seem to be lower than that, it's possible that being so close to the thermal aqua tuna might cause some issues there. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and disable this building for now. And I'm going to set it to like priority now because I don't want this heating up or doing anything. I don't want the water flowing at all just yet. We need to sort out this oxygen problem, this blue oxygen problem, which I really didn't think was going to be that much of a deal. I was really hoping it would kind of just like get pushed out of the way as soon as this guy started to erupt heat. Um, I didn't anticipate the steam being less dense and, or more dense and falling down to the bottom here. Uh, could we please get this um, deconstructed, my friends? I would very much so like that uh, that pump to get going again because it's kind of the, the only thing stopping us right now. So ventilation, gas pump, priority, top priority, boom. And the gas pipes are also going to be top priority, like so, like so. And then we do now have what it takes to make a high pressure gas vent. That is also going to be a top priority. There we go. I'm going to set the filter to steam like so. And we do, of course, need to provide power to this thing as well. Thankfully, power is right there. And then the other output pipes are already done. That's fine. So hopefully everything here is top priority. So they're going to get that done right away. We do also have to hook up power, of course, to this guy. Hopefully that's not too out of reach. It doesn't appear to be. They can probably stand here and, uh, and get that taken care of. This is still, by the looks of it, overheating. But ideally, that might almost be done. I'm going to set this to, oh, I didn't, I'm a fool. I did it again. I didn't make it out of gold amalgam. Okay, third time is the charm here. Gold amalgam, please build this right here. There we go. Okay, that should work this time, ideally. It looks like the gas pipe behind it might also be broken. Uh, somebody is starving. Um, that could be to do with the, wait, are you trapped? Why are you standing here? Please move out. What is this guy? Oh, he can't breathe? Okay, he's 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 fine. I don't think he's going to starve. Yeah, no, he took his stuff better there. Okay, I think I think this is okay. I think our duplicates have maybe just been working a bit a bit too hard lately. But he should go and eat right now. There we go. I don't know why he's eating at this mess table. That's actually um very much so not what I want to do. Can I unassign you from this? Please go and select another mess table that is currently unassigned. E.g. this one. I have uh, I have no idea what the logic was there, but all of everybody else got assigned a mess table. Maybe it tries to do like the closest mess table first, and that's why it chose that one. But uh, nevertheless, is this working? Kind of, but the gas pipe is broken. So I'll set this to a priority, do it now fix. And I am aware that by doing that, I do kind of um, perpetuate the issue of starvation. I perpetuate the issue of them not being able to eat and whatnot. But right now we're out of power, and that's a problem. Why are we out of power? Oh, it's because they've not, it's because this is out of power. And they've not done this here, which makes a lot of sense. I'm going to set this to priority nine 
And I know a lot of this stuff seems quite urgent here. And I guess it's not, it doesn't need to be this urgent, right? Like nothing really happens if we just leave this um, and don't use it too much for now. We've got enough water to keep us going, but I really do want them to get this sorted out because I think we're just, we're so close to having this system work and be functional and not having to worry about water for our electrolyzer for hopefully quite some time here. So if we can get this done and taken care of, I think we should be good to go. Let's not forget that we also have to dig out over here. And I did also forget to put in the heavy wall joint plate. There was almost like no way in the world that this was going to work. Uh, that doesn't need to be priority, like, do it now. I'll set it to, like, priority nine. I mean, I would like it done, but it doesn't need to be, uh, you know, above eating and sleeping or anything like that. So as soon as they get that back connected up, everything should come back online. And we should hopefully see the polluted oxygen out of here. It looks like the polluted oxygen might actually already be gone. Like, it might, we might not need this gas pump anymore, but I am going to turn it back on real quick and see if, um, if there's even just a little bit of, uh, of oxygen left in there. If there is, I would very much so like to, uh, to get rid of it. I can't help but notice that power is not online. Are we missing a, uh, a heavy watt wire somewhere along here? We are not. So power should be working now, I believe. Like, this should be online. Oh, it is. Good, 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 good. Okay, so it looks like, yes, it looks like we have managed to successfully get almost all of the polluted oxygen out of here there is a little bit in this top right corner and maybe if we leave this on long enough oh there we go i think that's gonna come out oh no it looked like for a second it looked like it oh there we go we got it we got it okay fantastic okay in that case this room looks now like it is completely full of steam so i'm gonna go ahead and schedule the deconstruction of pretty much all of this i'm gonna set it to buildings for now because i don't want to delete any uh any pipes behind it or anything like that. I want to make sure that for now, it's just the new stuff that we've built as well as the gas pipes like so. And we will go ahead and re-enable this building right here because I think now we're ready to start pumping heat out into this area and, and getting things going. How is the oil down here doing? It is not doing well because I didn't put down any ladders, which is definitely going to inhibit our duplicates ability to get down to this area here. But we'll schedule that. We'll let them start building that stuff down there. This stuff has all been taken care of, which is good. I will also schedule the deconstructing of gas pipes and also uh, those one or two power wires that we've got sticking out there as well. We can also get rid of the gas pipes that go all the way over to here. And the vent itself can also be deconstructed. So this is now online. You'll see it is still overheating here, which means that we almost certainly do need some kind of, um, some kind of coolant to get this going. And the temperature, it's almost there. We did just produce our first little bit of water from our steam generator so the system does have the potential to work which i guess is you know the vaguest thing ever said but it looks like it might possibly work now at this point i don't know if this water is still moving it looks like it's not but the thermal aqua tuna is still producing temperature so maybe it is working like this thing is still going we do have some overload damage here which is a little unsettling what is why are you overloading is it the normal wire that's overloading because i feel like there's no way the normal wire is overloading no it's the the bridge is overloading the bridge has a max voltage of 2000 watts that is why would that break i feel like that shouldn't break right okay real quick can i put heavy watt wire here okay i think what i might do then in that case is delete this wire which is going to break our system for a second here but i think we're just gonna have to go with a heavy watt joint plate that goes through the wall here i really thought that this should work like this is not using over 2000 watts and the conductive wire i believe does conduct 2000 yeah two kilowatts so i'm not sure what is going on there but in the interest of keeping the system you know running i will uh, go ahead and throw down some of this wire and of course set that to uh, priority nine not uh top priority and of course we'd have to reconnect that up over here as well all right how and let's not forget actually real quick before i jump back down let's put the uh let's schedule the building of this guy which i don't think i can put well, maybe i can put it there i'm not sure we'll, we'll try put it there and see if that works how are you doing over here this looks like it is almost good to go which is fantastic they're almost ready to uh to dig that out and put down the pitcher pump at which point we'll figure out if we can actually move oil uh, in that form or not okay so i have no idea what has happened here i guess maybe the crude oil was just like severely overpressurized because boy is that like this is just erupted out into here which i guess in some ways is, is not bad because now that now this is back online and we're making plastic again although i'm gonna say it's like a priority four for now because i don't know if we have 
the power capacity to run everything right now, especially those polymer presses, uh, which are quite quite power intensive. Uh, this is an unreachable dig. I'm hoping that just by putting like a um, some tile here, that might become a reachable dig. Although this is fully submerged, I think I think it should still be able to pump up the oil. Yeah, and I think just slowly over time, like this oil will settle down here and get pumped up uh, into our into our pre-existing setup. Now, this has been built out of sandstone. So real quick, what I'm going to do up at the top here, we have a bottle emptier down. So I'm going to specify, hopefully, crude oil. We do have crude oil. Fantastic. I'm also going to say enable auto bottling. I'm going to set it to priority, top priority, so that hopefully this will work. Now, the oil is going to mix in with the water here. That, I think, should be fine, because ideally, I'm also going to set this now back up to uh, a top priority, because we need this to be fixed. There's the oil. What I don't want to happen is kind of what's happening here, where the oil spills out into this, um, this area here. I want the oil to stay nice and thin, kind of along the bottom of the ground here. The setup is very quickly becoming a mess, but I think... I still think this can work. What we really need right now is to get the temperature of this water high enough to where it evaporates and turns into steam, which hopefully it will do soon here. At that point, the um, the oil can spill out and hopefully begin the cooling process. I might also put down some more um, heavy water joint plate. Speaking of which, there is one missing uh, right here. But I also I put some down along the floor as well to more easily transfer uh, the heat. Also, we can set this to like a priority six now. You can stop bringing oil over, guys. Uh, also, I assume that the... Um, the pitcher pump has destroyed itself. Not quite yet, but it's on its way. Uh, we might need more oil, but I don't think there's much point bringing more oil in until this water is gone. Okay, so this is our time. The steam is coming out. The room is getting hotter as it is. Really hoping... Oh gosh, this thing, empty pipe. What is going on here? We have lost all of the water. Where? How? Where has the water gone? Oh, the water's not... Oh, we don't have any water in here. That is not great. And also not ideal. Um, I think for now, again, temporary, we need more water in the system. So I'm going to set that to a, a very high priority. They are all reachable, which is good. They're going to build that pipe. Water is going to come back. The seam is going to evaporate. The oil is going to cool down the thermo aqua tuna. And hopefully, maybe just maybe, we'll also delete this one here for the time being. Maybe just maybe. The system might work. Oh, I think that's because it doesn't have anywhere to flow. I think what I need to do is I need to schedule the making of like some iron or maybe some uh, some copper. What do we have more of? We've got more copper. So I'm going to schedule just forever copper right now. I'm going to set this to priority nine so that hopefully somebody will come and start using this and start pumping uh, hot water into the system. The good thing about the hot water is that it's going to last hopefully longer in the system. It'll go around a few more times before it gets pumped out as, you know, sub 17 degrees Celsius water, at which point hopefully it gets pumped back in to the metal refinery. So we should be able to hopefully kill two birds with one stone here and get a little bit of extra metal out of this process as well. So there we go. Metal is being made. We should see some nice hot... No, please. Why? Output pipe full. Oh, I didn't connect it to the output. Okay, hold on real quick. There we go. Okay. Okay, so I think I have finally managed to crack this. It took quite a while, um, and it really is all about that kind of upfront cost. The biggest hurdle that I was kind of struggling to get over here was getting the temperature in this room hot enough to where the system actually worked. And so what I've had to do is I've locked the door by disabling them from coming in or out. So they can't get in this room. They can't come out. This bottle empty is probably going to stay here forever, but you'll see that the steam is now at 132 degrees Celsius. It's going to keep going until it hits 145, at which point uh, the thermo aqua tuna should shut off. Um, I've done this by having the metal refinery be a top priority and just pumping out copper ore. So the idea here is that the water gets cooled down, transfers all that heat to this room, and then goes back into the metal refinery, heats right back up. And so we're transferring all that heat from the metal refinery over and into this room here. Once we've got the system kickstarted, all of the steam is transferred into water. And so the system should be self-sustaining from this point on. So the water continues to circulate around. Water comes out of the steam turbines. Excess water is now going to go down uh, to the main area. And so I haven't tested it. I've legitimately just connected up uh, this pipe back over to this area for our electrolyzer, which I now realize may have been offline for quite a bit of today's episode. But it looks like for the most part, duplicates are okay. A few of them are a little stressed, probably to do with the top priority stuff uh, that I've had them doing quite a bit of recently. But I think finally, guys, we don't need the metal refinery now. We can get rid of that. But I think finally, everything here is almost good to go. 
This is still too hot, eh? That's annoying. I'm going to bring this down to like one, three, two. I think it's all about straddling this line because this is now broken. And annoyingly, if we come in here, this steam is going to come rushing out. And the temperature in here is going to drop quite a bit. And I don't know if there's an easy way that we can get a duplicate in here to fix this without letting steam out. I'm going to try it. I'm also going to hope that going forward, having this be at a lower temperature will not have this break. So if we can keep this under 125 degrees, hopefully it won't break. It is definitely doing better now we've got the oil here. Like it's not getting up to like 240 degrees Celsius like it was in the past. But yeah, see, there you go. Like the temperature drops quite a bit and we also heat up that room quite a bit as well i'm gonna bring this down even further we'll say like 130 125 is the number we need but ideally we do want it a little higher than that you'll see ah all the temperature we need this room above 125 degrees celsius if it's not above 125 degrees celsius the water stops coming from the steam turbines i think we might have to try and find a material that can withstand temperatures hotter than gold Either that, or maybe look into making our temp shift plates out of something that is better than gold at transferring heat. I think the best material you can make your temp shift plates out of is diamond. I believe diamond conducts heat the best. And so, it's all right now, it's all about getting the heat away from the thermo aqua tuna as fast as possible. I don't think that we can make our thermo aqua tuna out of diamond. I think going forward, there are definitely materials we can make our thermo aqua tuna out of that would potentially withstand higher temperatures than the gold currently can. You'll see it's kind of sitting around 140 degrees Celsius, which is still way too hot. But wait, the overheat temperature is 175 degrees Celsius. So why? Wait, is, is this breaking anymore? Oh, I'm a fool. I am a fool. So the, it turns out that the thermo aqua tuna can actually withstand heat up to 175 degrees Celsius. The problem here is that my output pipe that takes the cold water away is broken. So right now the cold water is just circling back around. Isaac, you fool. Ideally, if we connect this back up and we go in and fix this one last time, and if we can get the temperature back up to 125 degrees Celsius, we might actually be onto something. So priority, top priority, go fix that, please. Somebody will come in there and get that going. I know it looks like it's working right now, but it's not, even though it's got the animation going there. So hopefully somebody will come and fix this. I was so confused there for a second, wondering why it was overheating. I was sure that it shouldn't be. Thankfully, it seems to be uh, to be fixed now. They can get through this door, right? Yeah, they can. Okay, so once again, a few cycles later, I think I finally have this cracked. So what I've done, we now have an outflow for the cold water. The cold water is now set up with this bridge here to go into the metal refinery if it can. If it can't go into the metal refinery, it's going to go out this way and down with the rest of the water, which right now is just heading down to here. This system should hopefully be self-sustaining here. It should continue to keep up um, its cooling and, um, and heating effects, ideally. The machine right now is disabled by the thermo sensor, which is fine. This is still online here, although this seemingly is not online. Oh, it's because the pipe is blocked. Okay, so I think the remedy for that is simply to bump these up into the wall, uh, like we've had in the past where you have a pipe that overlaps another pipe. I think simply if you do something like this, it solves the problem and then have a pipe go like this and like this and just delete the uh, the pipes in the middle like that and that i think if you do it like that then the water merges at these key intersections as opposed to uh, overlapping the uh, the pre-existing pipe if that makes sense right now this one can't output its water because this one's already you know overlapping the pipe there and so ideally if we can get this new pipe set up up and running here this should be moving even more smoothly than it is right now and producing even more water for us 4,000 grams per second of water to be precise now it's the, they're both pumping out and getting circled around people are starving again i think that is they should be fine we've got enough food for now at least i'll take another look at the food in a second here but finally guys i think this is working the system only stops when it gets too hot in here um it turns out by the way it wasn't the thermo aqua tuna as well that was overheating the thing that's almost broken right here is the insulated liquid pipe behind it which i have replaced with a better version like these ones here are made out of sandstone for whatever reason sandstone can't get that hot and so i had to replace it with one that was made of granite and so now i think these pipes around the thermo aqua tuna should be fine uh, how are we doing on food real quick um these are all not growing because it's too warm what is happening here so this is sending a green signal the system appears to still be working for the most part but apparently it's just too hot 
That's not great. That does kind of throw my Weezwap plan out of the window. However, this room up here seems to be fine for now. These steam turbines are, are a nice cool 35 degrees Celsius, and so should be okay. I am interested to see if the system can keep itself going after the steam vent stops. So it's going to start again here. Hopefully, as soon as it starts, the whole system kicks back into gear. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. That's the kickstart we need. So it looks like because there's just enough steam left in there, uh, now I would like you to never, ever go in or out of here again, my friend. That is, no one should ever be in this room. Unless something breaks, which it shouldn't. That is getting quite hot, though. If it gets over 175, it does, uh, it does burn. I might even get a little tighter on this and maybe do like 128. We do have to be careful, of course, but we do have a lot of temp shift plates here, so hopefully everything should be good. It looks like 128 is working just fine. Nice. So this should be producing, you know, a nice amount of water that should hopefully start backing up in here eventually and uh, should continue to provide our electrolyzer with water for a very long time to come. I'm almost certain that we're going to need more liquid reservoirs. We can build those in future episodes here. Next time, we'll come back. We will maybe look again at uh, the body temperature here. We'll look about maybe putting down uh, some more wheeze warts, trying to get those uh, up and running again with the bristle blossoms because these are just way too cold and we try to figure out uh, another way to get these going. Although this room uh, seems to be doing fine, but then again, it does have two wheeze warts there. But my system over here, I think, works and i'm hoping is sustainable we'll see of course in the long run whether or not it is and um, it also gives us a nice ability if we want it to use a metal refinery i'm hoping the metal refinery doesn't interfere with the system and it wasn't originally part of the plan but it is kind of set up right now as a, a kind of backup way of generating heat if we need it uh, but for now guys i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up today's episode of oxygen not included there if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more in the future be sure to go ahead and hit that like button it really does help out a lot leave a comment down below subscribe if you're new here to get notified as soon as new videos go out as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.